As a kid, did you ever read the picture book, If You Give a Moose a Muffin? In the story, the simple act of giving a moose a muffin sets off a chain reaction of events. Next, he'll need some jam to go with the muffin, which will make his hands sticky, and then he'll need a napkin, and- <laughs> We're all gonna die! Wait, did you just give us a spoiler? He kinda did. Cut spoiler that, alert. Cut that part out. Cut spoiler that part alert. Out. Everybody dies, we cut that part out. Well, when a company forgets to make adjusting entries, it can cause the same sort of chain reaction to our financial statements. Mistakes we make in recording our revenues and expenses usually affect more than one account over more than one period. You have to track the mistake's impact to determine how it'll affect the company's financial position. In this video, we'll be looking at two types of adjusting entry mistakes companies can make. Companies can overstate their expenses or understate their expenses. Over the next few minutes, we'll observe the effect of each type of adjusting entry mistake on the company's financial statements. Make sure to also stick around for part two of this video, where we go over the remaining two types of adjusting entry mistakes, overstating revenues and understating revenues. Let's get started. The first kind of adjusting entry mistake is to understate expenses. When companies fail to report an expense, they report a lower value for their expenses than they actually incurred, causing net income to appear higher than it actually is. This can happen for a couple of reasons. First, the company could forget to record an expense. Let's look at a company called Muffin Top, which makes clothing to help moose, mooses, mouses, mice, survive our harsh Canadian winters. Perhaps the company got advice from a fashion consultant and haven't yet received the bill for her services. Muffin Top has used up the value of this service, so they should report an expense by debiting consulting expense, say for $500, and crediting accounts payable for $500. But if Muffin Top forgets to do so, then its expenses at the end of the year will be $500 lower than they actually should be. Another way the company could understate its expenses is by forgetting to adjust its prepaid expenses. Perhaps three months ago, they bought a one-year antler insurance policy for $3,600. By three months in, they've used up one quarter of this policy, so they should make an adjustment debiting insurance expense and crediting prepaid insurance for $900. By failing to record these expenses, the company reports lower expenses than it really should. For more information on how to journalize prepaid expenses, you can check out our video linked in the description. It's clear why this error will cause the company's expenses to be understated at the end of the period. But what are the other ramifications of this accounting mistake? Let's return to our antler insurance example and trace this mistake through the company's accounts through time. By forgetting to adjust its antler insurance expense, Muffin Top failed to record a $900 debit to insurance expense to recognize the quarter of the one-year insurance that has been used up and a $900 credit to its prepaid insurance expense to reflect the decrease in this asset. So Muffin Top's expenses are understated by $900 and its assets are overstated by $900. That understated expense will then have an impact on the income statement. We'll be deducting fewer expenses from our revenues than we ought to, causing net income to be overstated by $900. Net income will be reported as $900 higher than it really is. But that's not all. The company's net income is closed to its retained earnings at the end of the period, since net income increases the value in our retained earnings account. So overstating net income by $900 will cause the balance in our retained earnings account to be overstated by $900 as well. This silly mistake in forgetting to make an adjusting entry to our insurance sure is getting out of hand. But wait, there's more. Next period, Muffin Top will use up the remaining nine months of this policy. The company will need to remove this policy from its assets by crediting insurance expense to represent the value of the prepaid insurance that we've used up and debiting prepaid insurance expense because we've used up all the insurance and no longer have this value in our assets. But since we never expensed the first three months of this policy, all 12 months of the policy will be expensed next period. So even though the company only used up nine months worth of antler insurance in the next period, $2,700, it must expense all 12 months of insurance, or $3,600. So its expenses will be overstated by the same amount that they were understated last period, $900. This in turn will cause net income to be understated by $900, since our expenses are too high. Then we will close this account to our retained earnings. Let's look at the overall impact of this mistake. 
Understating our expenses by $900 by forgetting to make this adjusting entry to record prepaid insurance expense will cause net income to be overstated by $900 this year and understated by $900 next year. By the end of next year, this overstatement and understatement will cancel each other out in our retained earnings. So the good news is this mistake will correct itself by the end of next year. But the bad news is net income is still misstated for those two periods. This matters because net income is what shareholders and creditors use to evaluate company performance. Imagine if a new CEO, Buck Beaverton, took over at the beginning of next period. The understatement of net income by $900 might be attributed to his poor leadership, when in reality, he had nothing to do with it. Before we move on, let's reflect. If I'd asked you at the start of this question how understating expenses would affect next year's net income, you might have not known where to start. But by following the chain reaction through the company's financial statements, we can see how one mistake can affect multiple accounts over multiple periods. We can do the same thing for the remaining three categories. Overstated expenses, understated revenues, and overstated revenues. Let's talk about overstating our expenses. Right away, we should be able to tell that overstating our expenses should have the exact opposite effect as understating our expenses, so we can simply reverse the effects that we observed in the previous example. Overstating expenses will cause retained earnings and net income to be understated, since we're subtracting too large of a value from our revenues. Companies can overstate their expenses by recording a cash payment as an expense that should really be recorded as an asset. Suppose Muffin Top paid Goose Gears $10,000 to repair its back shaving station at the end of the year. This $10,000 included a two-year insurance policy in case the machine breaks down again, worth $2,000. The company records the entire $10,000 as an expense by debiting repairs expense and crediting cash. This fails to account for the $2,000 future value the company will receive from the insurance policy. The company should have recorded an $8,000 debit to repairs expense and a $2,000 debit to prepaid machine insurance. This mistake will cause the company's expenses to be overstated this period and assets to be understated this period by $2,000. Let's follow that chain reaction. Overstating expenses by $2,000 will cause net income to be understated by $2,000. An understated net income will cause retained earnings to also be understated by $2,000. Over the next two years, the company would normally have to remove its prepaid insurance as the two-year insurance policy is used up every year. Recording a debit to insurance expense as the value of the insurance gets used up and a credit to its prepaid insurance of $1,000 each year. But they've already expensed this $2,000 by mistake this year. So for the next two years, we won't make any journal entries to record this expense, which means that in the next two years, we'll report $1,000 less in expenses than we ought to. This will cause net income to be $1,000 higher than it should be for the next two years. At the end of the first year, retained earnings will be understated by $1,000. See how the mistake has already started to correct itself as we went from an understatement of $2,000 to an understatement of $1,000 next year in our retained earnings. The following year, the second $1,000 overstatement of net income will fully cancel out this difference in retained earnings. By now, you can see how tracing a mistake through a company's accounts through time can help you decide whether the mistake will cause the company's accounts to be overstated, understated, or unaffected. Ultimately, even though adjusting entry mistakes eventually balance out in our retained earnings, overstatements and understatements are still not ideal. Like in the example with our Beaver CEO, important financial decisions can be based on a company's net income and retained earnings reports. So if they're falsely recorded, this can have a significant impact on business and investment decisions. That's why it's important to trace the mistake through the company's financial statements. And remember kids, never give a moose a muffin. If you're within muffin distance of a moose, you are already too close. They're incredibly violent. Please make sure to click onto part two of this video where we explain what happens when companies overstate or understate their revenues. And make sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching!